Hello everybody, welcome back. Let's uh, make sure it's all working. Yep, she's good, she's good. So, yeah, it looks like uh, Bitcoin, and not only that, altcoins continue to run as well, which is nice. It was only like a week ago that that sort of comment suggesting uh, anything of that nature was met with horrendous disgust and disdain in the comments. <laughs> you, uh, hey. One of the biggest ones so far is Link. Link is actually broken out now, which is excellent. Who told you? I told you. Uh, to be fair, I didn't say it was going to break out. I said uh, 940 would have been the top. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's, it's got continuation. Those of us on the Patreon, we look at this regularly. And I've, I've, I say twice a week on the Patreon that Link is generous. Link is generous. It's been giving us all this time to buy in. This is the largest accumulation zone of any range of any crypto that I can remember in a long, 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 long time. Which eventually, will, when breaking out, is going to be incredible. And uh, we might be looking at that sort of thing happening right now. So, yeah, excellent stuff. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Nice quick trade over the weekend, uh, sorry, over the week um, on, tr on link. But hodlers delight, especially above 940. Well played, all of you who accumulated this beast. Because, again, yeah, <laughs> and everybody wants the new coin, don't they? The new coin that's literally just been, um, you know, farted out into the, uh, into, you know, the... Uh, um, the the dexes or whatever, but yeah, sometimes yeah, there is something to be said with a market cycle. Yeah. Ah, and there we go. Anyway, that's enough of that. Uh, INJ obviously running continuation as well. Again, these are all highlighted things from my previous week's videos. But the main thing that we need to focus on at this stage is actually going to be Ethereum and Bitcoin. So what's Ethereum doing, right? So Ethereum has literally just come up to do a test of a 200 exponential. So that is like a, a, a like a major resistance. Actually, it's kind of bearish really to see that. That is your death cross retest. So if you were like super bullish on this, you'd get a golden cross and you'd see the cross, you'd wait for a move into it. There's your simples, there's your exponentials. You'd look to bounce and rebound off these, hopefully to go for a V-shaped recovery. In the form of a death cross, you'd look for the opposite, unfortunately. So as much as I am like pleased and happy to see green across the board, slightly concerned that this is where we are right now. It does make you feel like there is a temporary um, uh, pullback taking place if not a full-on reversal and continuation down to new lows. Not a popular thing to say today, I know. Counter to what I was saying last week, where I think everything's going to pump, to which it did. Now I'm saying, look, just let's just be careful at this exact level. For altcoins particularly, not every single altcoin is created equal, as we all well know, which is why I highlighted the ones that have seemed to have done well. So BSV, Link, INJ... And there's going to be a few others. I'm actually very optimistic about the way that XRP looks. But with Chainlink, uh, I mean, with uh, Ethereum potentially getting a death cross retest at this exact level right now, you do have to be prepared for a rejection that actually comes back down to support and then breaks it. I know what it sounds like. It sounds bad. But remember, markets can be counterintuitive, right? Uh, for the most part, they probably are, which is why most people end up in wrecked city. So when you're up, you want more. When you're down, you expect lower. Uh, but uh, I'm not saying this is going to happen. Um, I'm just putting it out there that this is major rejection zone and uh, this is t still a, a downtrend. Um, so let's try and play devil's advocate. Let's take it to a four hourly. Okay, right, so the four hourly, painting a different picture. Painting a picture of a potential golden cross going to be formed probably at some point today, so long as we're above 16, 13. Okay, that's good. I like the idea of that. We'll run with that then, shall we? We'll, we'll, we'll take that for what it's worth. And um, and uh, with that, we will uh, be more optimistic about all the other things that we've been talking about. Bitcoin then, let's have a look at you and then we'll go into boring financial markets if you've got the time for that. Bitcoin, obviously, broken above 28,500. Continuation, continuation, continuation is the name of the game. Um, so I've just come back from the school run. My fingers are frozen. Freezing outside. Well, I can't click mouse buttons properly. Um, right, so yeah, as far as uh, the momentum is concerned on the daily here, it's good. And we're still probably looking to move up towards and test the top of this range, 31,900 we'll call it. So Bitcoin is good. This is not looking at like, like a uh, Ethereum chart. This is a bullish chart with a nice rainbow spread of moving averages with a pumps uh, signal that was generated at 28,500 making you feel like it's most likely going to carry us up to the major area of resistance, previous local high over here. So that's good. That's really good. Let's take it to a four hourly then. What's going on on the four hourly? 
one, two, maybe a third drive of bearish divergence taking place here. Certainly is on the Monifo index. Pullbacks on this one, I'd be looking down back to the Bollinger Band, so probably just below 30,000 at best. Uh, and uh, still be pretty bullish on this one, above 28,500, to be honest. Um, so Bitcoin is a different story to all the others. Uh, but that doesn't mean that there's not money to be made in altcoins. As we well know, last week we made plenty of money on altcoins while Bitcoin was going up. Um, you know, some of those altcoins that we that we were trading went up a lot more. So it's not as cut and dry as it sounds. But yeah, just be careful whatever it is that you're trading. This is why there's value in the Patreon. Come come and join us on the Patreon. Two live streams a week. We look at whatever it is, whatever chart you want. And uh, you're normally able to highlight a couple of charts that uh, are looking to do well. <coughs> regardless of market moves right now boring old dixie so dixie uh, closed again uh, last week in the red uh, continuation at the moment in the red not really looking for a big breakdown um, until we start to see these levels uh, getting smashed so major support sitting at 105.7 and next support 105.36 and then below there then yeah we could actually be looking at a serious downtrend so if that's that What's gold doing? Because I was a little bit scared of gold. Still am a little bit. Gold uh, finding peaks on the money flow index. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean the top. But what it usually means is the best way to think about it is that it might not be the peak, the top. Although sometimes it's a good indication of, a, of where a pullback is going to take place from. It normally, for me, would indicate don't go long on these areas. No matter what you might think of gold, it's too risky to take a long position on this one. The, the, the liquidity is at all-time highs uh, and ready to be uh, you know, sucked out of the system. Last time we saw a peak on this, by the way, I've got a three-year-old plain air tablet next to me. If you wonder what all that racket was. Last time we saw a, a money flow index read of this size was back over here, back in March. And uh, and April, so we got uh, the, the two major peaks there. And as a result of that, um, we did pull back, you know, pretty pretty big move, 20 21 percent move down on gold, which is a lot, you know. Especially at this stage, if you remember what was going on around here with Russia Ukraine, everybody's like, oh, no, no, it's, gold's got to go up, man, it has to go up. Well, so well, I'll tell you what, it's a buy the rumor, sell the news. Might be a similar kind of vibe right now. Obviously, what's going on. In the Middle East, oh, buy, buy, buy. We're going to need gold. Everyone needs gold. Buy, buy, buy. And then, yeah, whatever unfolds over there, unless it's absolutely significant, uh, you know, particularly significant, buy the room, sell the news might be. <clears throat> but look, over time, this is still a very bullish chart. Let's face it. You know, stand back, you know, when in doubt, zoom out. It's still bullish, but I'm just talking short term trades here. We're looking at a daily chart here, not a weekly, not a monthly, a daily. And uh, the daily is overheated. You know, it's a, it's a crowded trade. So I would stay clear of taking long positions on it. At this level, uh, feel free to take longs a little bit lower down, maybe at 19. Um, but uh, tight stop losses the entire way, because it might be a buy the room and sell the news. Right then, so s and is not open, so we'll look at the futures market. Futures market currently more or less flat. Uh, however, it's not in a good position on this daily, below major moving averages without catching support. I'd blame Tesla for that, really, but uh, but yeah, that's the nature of it. They call it the Magnificent Seven, the seven big stocks. You know, Apple, Google, Amazon, Meta, uh, Tesla, oh, what's the other one? NVIDIA, I think. Propping up the entire S&P and Nasdaq, more or less. So, anything happens with those bad boys brings these things down. You know, the the, the you know the in, the indices will will start to come down if it's one of those basically, you know, soils its underwear one night. So and that's basically what seems to have happened here. So whether this is a, you know a bit of an extended candle body or not, I couldn't really say. But I don't really like the way it looks on this daily here. So I would um, I would. I would stay clear of this one as we might be having an extended downtrend on this one. And remember, we haven't made a new all-time high on this. This is just another lower high. Bloomberg were talking about 5,000, and that scared me. <laughs> and Bloomberg you know, saying, oh, 5,000, yeah, seems okay to me. I was like, oh, God, right, okay. I know what you're doing here, Bloomberg. So, yeah, I'm not saying it can't happen, but it doesn't actually look like... Uh, that is possible in the short term. But remember, this is a Tesla problem. That's basically all that there is really to say at this stage in the, on a Monday morning. Um, so, long story short, let's be a little mm, careful about how we go about making our positions today. 
I know everybody's going to be looking at these and going, Oh, I've missed out. FOMO! I've got a FOMO! I need to FOMO. No, no. I would, I would stay clear of FOMOing into anything. There's nothing wrong with taking positions in charts that have good setups. Um, and, you know, I'll bring it to your attention once again. You know, XRP is not a bad setup, you know. Four hourly incoming golden cross taking place here. Probably going to confirm on the next tick, really. Um, the, 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 the daily is pushing its last level of major resistance, moving average-wise uh, and above all the others. Slowly creeping up above the zero point with decent momentum. So actually, you know, XRP is an okay setup. You know, I showed it last week. So if there is something that's likely to move massively, uh, you know, this could be one of those coins. This could be one of those charts. Although there is no guarantees because we're talking about Ethereum potentially pulling back. But so XRP, just anecdotally anyway, XRP does have a habit of moving you know, against the rest of the market. It is one of those charts that can just do what it wants when it wants and it doesn't necessarily need the market to uh, to move with it or in the same way as it. So we just, just remember that. But um, yeah, if there is a decent risk to reward chart to be trading, it would be XRP. Um, yeah, with a you know, invalidations below well, fifty cents really, but probably even tighter than that, fifty fifty one cents, uh, with a with a view to move back up into sixty and ninety and beyond. Sounds crazy, but there's, that is true. But remember, tight stop losses. Ethereum is just doing a death cross retest. So remember that. Just remember all of that. Anyway, it's going to be an interesting week. I'm 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 pretty sure we're going to see some uh, mad stuff take place this week. Uh, whether it's to the up or to the down, I've been pretty sure it's going to be an interesting week. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean <clears throat> you're all going to be millionaires by Friday. It could mean quite the opposite. So just remember that. This is only Monday morning. It's not time to go crazy. You know, we could be optimistic about certain things, but we still have to play the balancing act of the entire market, which is downtrending at S&P, potential top on gold. Uh, Dixie doesn't know exactly what it wants to do. Bitcoin's pushing up towards its previous local high. Some alts are running, giving the false impression that everything's going to run. So just remember that. It's not plain and simple. In fact, it's actually it's, it's like playing a game of Jenga. Uh, you know, w when you're drunk, maybe. It's, 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 not, it's not plain and simple. Right, I'll leave it with you there. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a nice day. Take it easy.